Hello everybody. How are you doing? It's not my uh, usual video today. Nothing walking around in the cemetery or anything like that. Or whatever you want to say. Whatever you want to call it. Um, actually, I just thought I'd get out and walk around and just think. You know, do some thinking. And wonder if if I have helped anyone at all in anything that I've said or spoken about, um, you know, I just wonder. I sometimes think that when I say something, it comes out wrong, that people misinterpret me. People don't um, quite understand, you know, uh, what to think of me. They don't know, you know, me or the struggles I've gone through and stuff like that. But, hey, you know, <laughs> what do I expect? I mean, you know, you really don't know someone until you get a chance to sit down and learn about that person and then you can decide whether or not you know you want to involve that person in any and all aspects of your life as you know i've told you about my uh abuse that i went through as a kid and that's not easy to talk about it's not it still bothers me i still have a lot of um buried deep down inside memories that I deal with that somehow or another they just they keep coming back they get triggered you know by a sound a smell or a sight or a word a sentence a phrase whatever you want to say you know but you know crap happens right <laughs> I mean you if I spent my whole life telling everybody, okay, you can't say this, you can't say that, because it'll set off a memory, a bad memory, a memory that I don't ever want to remember, especially things like stuff that my mother used to say to me. And then you can't really point that out to anybody because then you see it's like their mind starts turning, you, they start thinking, what in the fuck is wrong with this guy? Excuse my French, I didn't mean to say guy. But, you know, I mean, it's just... Right now... I, I don't know. I don't know. When you, when you spend your whole life... Um in the pursuit of happiness. And when people, family members, friends, acquaintances, whatnot, you know, are, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but they're just not, um, they're, they're not tuned in to you. They don't really understand because either they, A, they can't accept what you share with them, it's kind of like they're in denial, or, or they think you're being childish, or, you know, you're how old, get over it, you know, things like that, and I've been having a lot of dreams lately, bad dreams, and um, right now, to be honest with you, they have terrified me to the point to where I don't know if I want to just have myself locked up in a rubber room because um, I don't know if it's because I talked about what I went through in my life. I don't know if it's because of that. I don't know if it's because, um, I, I don't know, I just... I've been waking up a lot every morning early because I, I keep hearing my dad saying, hey boy, you know, calling out my name. So, 
and the guy that usually talks a lot and rambles a lot and makes an ass out of himself every once in a while when I'm doing my videos and stuff really really uh I'm struggling right now to to figure it out what it is I'm trying to say. I hope and pray that whatever I have said in my videos, um, even in a negative way, has helped someone so that they can be more comfortable in, you know, saying, hey, um, that guy was, you know, brave enough to talk about it, so I guess I can too, you know? and. I wasn't doing it for someone to feel sorry for me. I wasn't doing it for someone to say, you know, oh, poor guy, you know. I was getting rid of the garbage that's up here and is trying to make its way right here. When you live a life where people end up either ridiculing you or they end up not wanting to be in your company anymore or just when you have lived the life that I have lived for so long. As someone said to me once, um, You know, you can't say that you've never been in love before, and some of you might, might understand what I'm about to say, but yeah, you can. You might think that you were at the time because of the way that person made you feel at the time, but then later on it turns out that... Um, how do they say it in, over there in the UK? You want their cup of tea, mate? <laughs> you know, you just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in a park, that's why I'm looking around. I don't want somebody to walk by and say, what the hell are you doing over here talking to yourself? Because I'm not. Well, the way I, I am, I'm talking to myself in front of you. I want to run in front of a truck. I want to jump off a high building. I want to see what lead tastes like. I want to lay my head down on a railroad track. If you really want to know what I'm feeling, that's what I'm feeling right now at this moment. And I hate it. I hate it with a passion. I am really tired of these headaches that I've been waking up with. I'm really tired of feeling like I'm never going to amount to anything in my life. Sometimes I feel like I, I don't have any purpose. You know, and I guess a lot of it, maybe a lot of it's my fault because, you know, of the life that I had. I don't like feeling isolated. I don't like feeling afraid. I don't like almost praying that I don't wake up. I don't like angering people but there's a reason that I am the way that I am and I and I I really I, I really I don't know if this is the last video that you see of me then it's the last video you see of me for a while anyway maybe I don't know and don't worry I'm not going to do those things I mentioned. I just wanted you to know that that's how I feel right now at this moment. My mother said to me a long time ago, 
because she thought I was an abomination that, that I was going to end up alone, that I was going to die alone, that I was never going to be happy, that people were never going to accept me, that people would always um, be upset with me. I am not capable of doing things right. And got away from that, and then I still heard it from her whenever I had talked to her when she was alive. She felt the same way all the way up to the day she died. When I was having my my uh, surgery, I had it on this side, by the way, with the scar of that. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, that's the first one I had. I called her. Uh, she was still alive. She was still living in Pampa, and... I called her because I wanted her to know I was going to have surgery. I was going to have a pacemaker defibrillator placed in. I was going to um, ask her if she would pray for me. That's what I was going to do. So when my nephew, who was adopted as my brother, by the way, said to me, um, what do you want? I said, I want to talk to my mother, if you don't mind. So I'm like, no, I don't I don't mind at all. I don't mind. Just if you don't mind if I talk to her, please let me talk to her. So she got on the phone and so the very first thing I said to her was, Mom, uh, I'm I'm gonna be having surgery. Um, I'm having a pacemaker put in. Uh, well actually a pacemaker defibrillator. First, first things out of her mouth was, I can't help you. And bye. <laughs> Hung up. And you know, even after all that, even after all the way that they treated me and said they didn't want me in that town, after the burial of my father, they wanted me to leave. And even though they didn't know I was there, that I was staying there, that I had been there for a while, uh, they didn't see me until like about seven months later when they ran into me at the store. And I mean literally ran into me. Uh, my nephew, adopted brother, um, hit me from behind with a cart. Didn't know who I, was, who I was in the store. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I turned around and he about crapped himself. And, um, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you still here? We thought you left and all that crap. Instead of, hey, are you okay? I've missed you. My mom wouldn't even say a word, except for when I kept saying, uh, "So what, what's the matter with you, Queenie?" And I was, I was, I was being mean to him because he had been mean to me, uh, you know. And that was wrong. I admit it. But I was also kind of outing him in a way to my mother because she never knew I knew about his preferences, which I have nothing against. Don't get me wrong. That's not my point. I don't, I don't uh, judge people by, you know, what they do in their life, who they choose to be with, uh, what they drink, smoke, whatever. That's their life. But uh, all these things that she instilled in my head all these years and, and her friend that was the one that was abusing me all this time, and I think my mother knew, I keep telling y'all that, and I think she knew because she always readily said, yeah, sure, they can go over, but she always made sure my brother and sister went. And then when we got there, the lady always made sure that my brother and sister played outside. Think about it for a minute. How would you feel if you had a barrel of a handgun stuck in your mouth and you see the trigger being pulled back, not knowing if there's a bullet in there or not. Your brother and sister are outside playing, having a blast. You can hear them, you know, playing in the pool out there and all that stuff. And she's looking you dead in the eye and she tells you, go ahead. Go ahead, scream. I want you to. I'll pull this effing trigger. You don't think I will? I, I'll never forget that. 
I'll never forget that. Especially when she always would threaten my children, my, my family, my, my brother and sisters. And she said, anybody in your life, I will kill them if you tell anybody about what I'm doing to you. Now, when, when you have these things happen to you for a long time, nonstop, from the age of 6 to 13, on a weekly basis, except for holidays when you're not around and she's not around, you, you really don't know if they're telling you the truth, if they really are going to do what they say they're going to do. You know, she was very, very skilled and able to hit me without leaving a mark. I was in pain, a lot of pain, but I, I couldn't say anything about it. And then fast forward, fast forward, fast forward into my life and it seems like the people that were a part of my life couldn't understand me because uh, of my PTSD, my depression, my anxiety, and you know, my being triggered by, by sound, sights, or whatever. There's even some shows that I start watching because I think, wow, this is going to be interesting. Maybe this will help me and I, I can't finish watching them. I can't. Um, I like, I told y'all, I like documentaries, I like watching crime shows and uh, stuff like that, but when they start talking uh, abuse, whatever, I can't, I have to get up, walk away, I'll put it on something else, I'll start working on a video, making songs, writing songs, making a video, trying to get my mind off of it, and you know, I'm over here feeling like a damn fool right now, saying all this. I walked out. I've not ever been in this area, in this part of this town since I've been here. Um, I needed to get out because I'm hurting on the inside, not just physically. But I'm hurting mentally. And here's a question for you. No, never mind. You try your best, you give it your all, you want to be that special someone, and you can't make little mistakes. They seem like big mistakes. You don't realize when you do it. And, you know, uh, my memory shot at, at times. I get up and I forget something. But I don't know. Maybe it's my age. I don't know. But I did have that COVID JN1. And I've read up on people and what doctors have said that, you know, you, um, you forget you have clouded memory, fog, foggy brain or whatever. It, it, it fucks with your memory. Excuse me, I didn't mean to say memory. But it upsets, it upsets you to the point to where you, you can't do anything right. You can't. <laughs> you just can't. And I don't want it to ever continue to be that way. I don't want it to stay that way where people think that I'm just um, nonsense. You know, I keep hearing my mother, especially a lot lately. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never be happy. You're going to die alone. And so why am I telling you this? Well, it beats the hell out of me. Maybe it's because I consider you all my family. You know, maybe that's why. Maybe it's because I feel comfortable talking to you and because I can't see you and you can't or won't judge me. Or you say you won't and you say you don't, but I really don't know. But you're my family. Not by blood, but 
what I have in my heart for you. You're my family. And I mean, look around. This is the this is a really beautiful place. I've always wanted to come down here. You can see the mountains. It's a park area. They were practicing soccer back there and stuff. And they even got a board of body and all that, you know. You have people come down here to go for walks and whatnot. And it just, I need to get out. I don't want to scream. I'm screaming on the inside already. So here's here's the deal. Chances are, it's a song. I think Johnny Mathis sang it. Chances are that I may lose some subscribers after this video. I may have people say, "Oh crap! Not again! Here we go again! Poor him! What is it? What does he want? You know? What is he expecting? I'm not expecting anything, but for somebody." anybody to be able to benefit from my ability to share something like this with you because then maybe it might open up a chance for you to share something with someone when you need to and honestly I that feeling again I want to lay down on the railroad tracks there's some tracks over there I want to jump off that bridge over there. There's a bridge right there. Hardly any water in the bottom, so that would probably hurt me pretty bad. If I could run out in front of the traffic there, because they really don't pay attention to where the hell they're going. I want to, but I'm not going to. Somewhere in this world, there's love. Somewhere in this world, there's happiness. Somewhere in this world, someone is smiling, enjoying their moments with someone, laughing. And then somewhere in this world, there's someone who pisses people off because they can't understand them. They can't deal with them anymore with their uh, anxiety, with their depression and whatnot. That's the bad part. That's the sad part. But that's reality. That's the truth. Again, I'm not here posting this or uploading this for sympathy or for anybody to say, you know, poor guy, open your ears, open your mind, open your heart and listen. Have you gone through this? You thought it was too late to lay on the track, wasn't it? They wouldn't have been able to stop in time. Boy, there's a song. About a woman with flowers in her hair. Aching in her heart. A song by Led Zeppelin. Going to California. It's always been one of my favorite songs by them. That and uh, believe it or not, I really didn't care much for uh, Stairway to Heaven. I mean, it's a great song. But um, that and uh, dazed and confused and 
Black Dog and a few others, but I really like that. I tried to sing it one time, it came out all right, but that song came to mind when I was thinking about the rhythm of it and the beauty of the words. I look around and I think about all the time I've been here. I haven't never been here except for I was way down there when I released a balloon. Uh, I believe it was for my dad's birthday or my daughter. I can't remember. I posted it. Didn't get many views, but that wasn't the reason I did that. And I just wanted to share it with you. And... Um, I've always wanted to come down here. It's like you see these these pillars around me, you know, how they are and they just honestly it feels like the wall the closing in. And I'm I'm undecided. So do I fight it? Or do I let it beat me? Do I fight it? Or do I just let lay down and give up? What would you do? You spend your whole life wanting to be accepted, wanting to be understood. You know, not everybody's perfect. I'm, I'm certainly not. My mother drilled that into my head from the day I was born. <laughs> she let me know that, but nobody is perfect. Neither was she, but that's not the way she felt. I could have done this at, at, uh, at on live, you know. I wanted to, I was going to, but I don't even know if I'm going to post this. And if I do, like I said, Whatever you want to say back to me in the comments, let her rip. Let me have it. Whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm scared. I keep hearing my... I keep hearing her, I keep hearing my mother is going to die alone. Nobody will ever love you. Nobody will ever accept you. Nobody will. Nobody will. Nobody will. I wish I could. Don't cry. I wish I could call my daughter. I wish I could talk to her. I wish I could talk to my dad. I wish everything was all right. So if it comes out that I end up putting myself in a psych ward just for safety purposes. <laughs> if that's what I have to do, if it keeps getting this way for me, that's what I have to do. I got money saved up, but it's not mine. So I can't, I can't wait any longer for the neurologist to see me. I have to wait till the 10th, and it seems like it's an eternity. Five or four months I've had to wait to see a neurologist. All this side of my head, from here on down, constant pain. And can't even talk about it. I mean, it gets old, I'm sure, if you're sitting next to somebody or around somebody or, you know, people... 24-7 and, and you keep talking about what the pain 
does to you and how much it affects you and stuff and it gets to where I don't know it's it's like it becomes a scab you know what I'm saying it's like in my mind it's like they they feel so what it's not my problem I've got other things to deal with. Or, um, there's that tower over there I could climb up on and jump off. I'm not doing this for views. I'm not doing this again, like I said, for pity, but I have to talk. I have to get it out. When you feel like you can't talk to someone and you have to be alone and just talk into the camera or the phone. And if that's what works for me, if that's what I can do and record it for prosperity's sake, you know, final reminder. The funny thing is, nobody probably not, doesn't even care where I'm at right now. I know my family doesn't, my, my flesh and blood family. I have a loving heart. I have a kind heart. I mean well. Yeah, I make mistakes. Yeah, I forget shit. Yeah, I, I do things that might irritate people, but I don't intentionally set out to piss people off. I don't. I'm a people person. I love talking to people. I don't care where I'm at. I'll talk to you like I've known you all your life. And you'll feel that way. Why? Because like that preacher told me when we buried my father, you're Jimmy made over three times. My dad was a, a, a man of God. He was a minister. But I'm pretty sure he had his uh, demons too, you know. Two weeks, two weeks before he died, he was talking to me on the phone and he made a comment to paraphrase it. I can't really remember word for word what it was, but it was something along the lines. He says, I wish I knew all this, all this time how to help you. I, I don't know if he's, if he knew what I went through growing up or if he knew that I had issues with anxiety and PTSD and depression and whatnot. Hell, who knows what else. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry to tell you son, but you got sugar diabetes of the blong hole. What else is new? Isn't that weird? The wind's not blowing. Usually when I do an investigation, it's windy. And I'm apologizing to everybody for the fact that it's windy outside. I don't, I, I don't even know if y'all will hear this clearly or not. So what does a rope feel like? What does a blade cutting through your wrist feel like? When I was uh, doing that uh, live when I joined and was asked to kindly by Joy from Joy and Joey. Thank you again, Joy, for inviting me. Um, I mentioned very briefly, and I don't know if... People really, you can, you don't know this if you're not a content creator, but you can tell. There's a section where you can tell how long people actually watch your videos. If they watch the whole thing or if they only watch part of it. It doesn't tell you who, but it can tell you the duration of views that on that particular video. If it's a five minute video and you only see like a minute and 43, that means that's all they watched. So the other three whatever minutes you know they're like okay well 
my next. So if you don't get to this part, then you'll, you'll never understand what the whole beginning is. But I told her that one time, uh, I was in, uh, living in San Marcos, Texas, and in an apartment, I had three roommates. They were gonna go to Mexico. I had, this was right before I had my big major, my first ever major breakdown that I had to be hospitalized. And um, my mother said something to me that I just, it just ate at me. And I don't want to repeat it. But just imagine your own mother who gave you birth saying something so terrible to you that it just makes you say, fuck it, I'm done, I'm, I'm through. She'll never accept me as her son as a firstborn, I'll always be an abomination to her. And I'm pretty sure she pointed it out to a lot of her friends, you know, so-called Christians. But I took um, 80 pills. Um, they were called Libriums. I think it was like a mood elevator because I, I can't remember exactly what it was. I took 80 of those. And I drank a half a bottle uh, Jack Daniels, Jack Black, <laughs> downed it, laid down, put my head on the, on the floor, uh, reached over, put the needle on the record, Elton John's funeral for a friend. That was a song. That's the way I was going to go out and listen to that, the way it starts. Listen to it sometimes. And I don't remember anything but waking up in the hospital, having my stomach pumped. And um, they found me because my roommate forgot uh, his wallet, forgot his wallet, and so went in, saw me there on the floor, foaming at the mouth, et cetera. And so they rushed me to the hospital. My parents came to see me. My brother and sister were in the waiting room. My dad came and, you know, brushed my forehead and, you know, put his hand on me and said a prayer and told me how much he loved me and don't ever do that again because he would be lost without me. I believed him when he said that. My mother, on the other hand, she leaned over and she whispered in my ear, you couldn't even do that right. And walked out. That's where I'm at. What have I done right so far? What have I done right? If it turns out that I end up to where I'm just alone in a cave or sleeping behind a dumpster or in a padded room, at least I know that people in my life that I have known all my life and that I have met recently and that I've met far back and up until now, probably wouldn't even notice I was gone. Probably would be relieved. So you tell me, and don't lie to me. I want you to be honest with me, okay? I want you to tell me what you really really believe in what you really feel about what you just heard and about what I just said, okay? Seriously. I want you to tell me. Have I made a difference in any of your lives? 
Have I made you laugh at a time or two when you were feeling down and needed to laugh? Have, have I given you comfort when you needed it without even knowing I was doing that? Have I even made you feel like, wow, I have a reason to go on because if this guy can make it this far, I can make it too. What have I done? Honestly, right now, my heart is racing and is pumping so hard right now. Usually when it does that, my, uh, my device, my pacemaker defibrillator, I, I can feel like it's gonna try to get it back into Rhythm again? I'm not feeling that right now. My heart is literally, it's hurting. I'm hurting. I never claimed to be the ultimate paranormal investigator. Shit, people look at my videos and say, that's not a paranormal investigator. He just walks around and talks bullshit, you know. Cracks up corny jokes. He hasn't even caught anything that looks like it's really interesting, you know. If I had the luxury of going places and doing things that all the other paranormal investigators would do, even if I didn't get any type of um, what you call it? Uh, evidence. I'd still post it because I made the damn effort. I wish Haley were here. I wish my dad were here. I'm tired of being judged. I'm tired of being looked at like just a closer walk with you. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. So tell me, if you're still watching, if you've watched all the way through, I don't want a repeat of anybody else's comments. I want complete, honest, total, totally, brutally honest opinions, comments, whatever you want to call it. What would you do? I'm 65 fucking years old and nothing to show for, for my life. Nothing. You know how embarrassing that is to say? That's really embarrassing. But I'm not holding back. I've shared my life with you thus far. I've told you things that people have said, oh man, you shouldn't have told people that you deal with depression and PTSD and anxiety, man, because people are going to bother you. Well, fuck, man, they've bothered me for the longest time when I first mentioned it years ago, and then I disappeared. I didn't talk to anybody 
online, uh, making a video. I didn't sing in any chat room, nothing. Because I was trolled. Go ahead, eat that bullet. Go ahead, hang yourself. Cut your throat. Just go like this. Do it fast. You won't know. You'll be dead before they get to you. My sole purpose. If dad were here right now, I know what he would say. He would say, hey boy, you better stop. God loves you, I love you. I'm sure somebody loves you. Haley loves you. I don't ever recall him saying, your mother loves you. But maybe he knew she didn't. So he didn't want to rub it in. I have given to you all, all of you who have viewed my videos, pieces of me, songs that I've sung that not many of you have really listened to, songs that I've written and arranged, uh, lyrics and all that, that quite a few have listened to. I have told everybody about a lot of you, to visit you, to comment on you. But I've never once, ever, ever said to you what I've said to anyone and filmed it and posted it. So whether you watch a minute and a half and then say, way to go, or whether you watch the whole thing, that's really your decision. I don't have the authority or the ability to make you watch every damn second of this video, but I just pray that if you've made it this far, maybe you'll understand. The change, I guess it's because my, my, the pain in my head. I don't mean to irritate people. I don't mean to aggravate people. And I really don't mean to feel this way, but a little bit too late, isn't it? Well, thanks for watching. Thanks to all of you for subscribing, for all the times you've commented. Thanks for visiting the other channels I've asked you to visit. Thanks for accepting me into your life, into your rooms when you watch. Thanks for letting me let you know who I am and what I'm going through. So I gotta walk back. Maybe I'll just go into the basement and cry before I post this. I mean it when I tell you. I love all of you. All of you are special to me. All of you are really considered my family. I'm not just saying that because it's a channel thing to do. I really do consider you my family. I really consider you part of my life. 
Thank you.